McGuire's welcomes you to the car craziest half hour on television. Traveling the world to prove that all car guys are the same. Regardless of where we live on the planet or what type of cars we love, the passion is the same. We're all just totally car crazy. It's about the Crazy. Welcome to Car Crazy Central, ground zero for monitoring the major events and personalities of the car hobby around the world. Each week, we creatively serve up a full menu of car crazy passion for you to enjoy via our car crazy television and radio shows, as well as on demand through our website, carcrazycentral.com. <laughs> Our mission is pure and simple. <laughs> oh, that's right. We want to make you just a little more crazy. What you did when you came to school with your homework is you put it up on a board and you had a critique. And they were tough. I mean, if you didn't go do good, sometimes they would take it off the wall and throw it out the window and say, now don't do that, you know, do this. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of Swedish. We've always been nuts about cars. And I don't know why, but we... As little country as we are, we sure have a lot of American cars. From one of the dealerships, I got the 50th anniversary calendar for Ford Motor Company. It was done by Norman Rockwell. Oh and my so oh 50, my 50 years later, I oh, got to do oh the calendar goodness. for Ford Motor Company. And you Company. are the Norman Rockwell. The so I, I and now your host, Barry McGuire. For those of us who can't afford the car of our dreams, we can generally buy it on canvas, thanks largely to my buddy Ken Ebert's. As an Art Center graduate, he began his career as an automotive designer for Ford, but in 1968, he made the bold move to leave Ford and try to support himself by combining his passion for cars with his passion for fine art. More than a thousand of his paintings are on display worldwide after holding more than 25 one-man shows and winning numerous awards for his nostalgic and heartfelt automotive artwork. Today, there's a legion of car guys who are also fine artists led and inspired by Ken Eberts because he's so talented and he's so car crazy. Welcome to McGuire's Car Crazy. You know, it's such a great time to be a car guy with all the cars that we have to enjoy today. I mean, the cars that we see at the shows, out on the lawns and the golf courses, the cars that are at the, at the racetracks, all the vintage motorsports that we have to enjoy today. But we're talking today about the cars that show up on canvas. Thanks to the Automotive Fine Arts Society. Ken Eberts is the co-founder of the Automotive Fine Arts Society and has been president ever since for how many years now? Oh, I think it's going on 20 years 20 right now. 20 years, years yeah. of, a, lot, of, a long time. A lot of fine art but with a, a lot of buddies of yours and mine. I lot, love these guys. A lot of fun. And you hit the nail on the head that, that we've all become close friends. And one of the reasons is that we're all car nuts. A lot of us that are car guys can't afford all these great cars but we could afford perhaps, although fine art is getting a little pricey, but it's right, a lot right, less right. expensive to I, take I them home on canvas. I can't afford my paintings either. <laughs> But, uh, but I can't believe what's going on. We, with we have you know prints and you know things that yeah, are a lower actually, priced, and uh, you know a lot of the people that buy my art buy prints. You know, there's the, the fortunate ones can buy the original. Yeah, let's talk about the different iterations of, of art. You can have the original, of course. Right, the original. Uh, in my case, I paint uh, watercolor and gouache. Uh, some of the uh, other artists use acrylic or oils or sculpture. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and when we say fine art, this is fine art. I mean, mm -hmm. there, there, there is a lot of drawings and whatever cars. But right. This is every bit what you would call fine art. The difference between fine art and commercial art. You know, commercial art was, was the artist that created artwork to sell cars, car brochures, you know, ads that you see in Saturday Evening Post, or whatever. Automotive fine art is uh, just to tell a story or to, to show your passion about cars. And that's my definition. Of, of but what's the least, least expensive, the print? Uh, the Hershey poster. Uh, I do the Hershey poster each year okay. and I sell that for $15. Okay. So that's pretty affordable. And signed limited edition. That's a signed limited edition of, poster. A, of poster. a litho or a print? It's a lithograph printed on a printing press. Okay. Right. Then when we get to the originals, What's the price range of a... Okay, well, I'll, I'll blow you away with the most expensive one. Yeah, there we go. Which, which was at Meadowbrook last year, I believe it was last year, I did the Meadowbrook poster, and that original sold for 45000 <laughs> So that's that's my upper level <laughs> right now. Uh, but I'd say the majority of my paintings go for uh, somewhere around $10,000, uh, and I go anywhere down to $4,500. Yeah. For people to pay that kind of money, the point I want to make is that people really admire the art that's being produced now. I mean, this well, is... I, I hope so. I mean, they're paying a lot for it, but it takes, yeah. it takes a lot of time, you know, and a lot of dedication in my whole life to learn how to do it. 
Uh, I only do you know between maybe 12 and 15 paintings a year, so you can do the math. You know, you got you got to yeah. get so much in order to be able to live on it. You know, yeah. I'm living on just being a automotive fine artist. So. Let's let's talk about the art that you were drawing back okay. as, as 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 a youngster. I mean, well, this from day one, you were a car guy. Yeah, uh, I grew up in the Bronx in a tenement, and when I looked out of the window from my apartment, which was on the in front of the street, uh, you saw asphalt and concrete and then brick, you know, there was nothing, I'm a visual person, there was nothing to excite me visually, except for one except thing, the cars. the cars that were parked in the street <laughs> in the 50s, you know, the 50s had, you know, all the chrome, two and three tone paint, you know, real long, low, fast looking lines, and I think that's what it initially caught my attention. Well, was, I always ask the, the question, yeah. you know, what prompted that? Seeing those cars in the street excited me. In my family was artistic talent. My grandmother painted, my father did drawings, and uh, so I think I had the artistic ability, and I couldn't buy one of those cars. We didn't own a car. It was almost impossible to own a car in New York City, and we didn't have the money. Sure. You were drawing cars, I mean seriously drawing cars at age eight, making models. Right. Talk about what was going through your mind and, and what well, was I, stimulating you to do that. I didn't just draw cars, I had my own company. It was called Future Motors. I mean, I manufactured and sold Kent and Victory and Bonzo. This was all in your cars. mind. Actually, it was all on paper. All you know, on paper. paper. No, it was imaginary. Right, but I mean, right. you, you were putting, but it was based on what was going on in your mind, exactly. not a real building or anything. I drew the dealerships, you know, and I drew uh, advertisements. I actually made the cars out of wood, two by fours, and then sold them to the neighbors in the building. As I, my talents got better, I evolved, and I, I made brochures and, and uh, workshop manuals, and I broke it down into pieces. When we come back, we'll find out about Ken's early years at the Pasadena Art Center and how it has continued to influence his life today. So don't go away. It's all right here on Car Crazy. Car Crazy. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy, here with the co-founder and residing president of the Automotive Fine Arts Society, Ken Eberts. You went to, to Art Center. College of Design, yeah. passed into California. Mm -hmm. That's great. Right, the best. I mean, 90% of the car designers in the world yeah. are, came from Art Center. How can you, I mean, right. you can't say enough about yeah. Art Center. And you, you know where I, where I learned about Art Center? You know, since 1953, I've subscribed to Motor Trend magazine. Okay. I also subscribed to Motor Life and Car Life and Road and & Track and Hot Rod and all these other. But they had an ad for Art Center in, in uh, Motor Trend, uh -huh. be a car designer. And wow. while I was in the high school music and art, I, you know, I would Boy. see these ads and I went to my guidance counselor and. I said, is this real? I mean, is actually a school where you can be a car designer? And she checked it out and she said, it is real. Wow. And so I applied to Art Center. Isn't that did, did a portfolio. My portfolio was based of all the cars that I had designed, you know, when I was a kid. And I got into Art Center, which was unbelievable because all of a sudden that I could draw cars and, with, and everybody said, great, you know, that's exactly <laughs> what you want you to do. Or high school music and art. No, 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 you don't draw cars. You know, you do still life, you do you know, pottery, whatever, but not cars. I mean, they, we love it. They say it, it is it. one of, if not the most difficult we, academic institution. We started with 40 kids in the class and we ended up the graduating class with six. Wow. So that's how long, you know, I mean, that's how the attrition rate was, was very small. Man, I experienced it firsthand as my daughter. Uh, wow. is a that's graphic right. artist right. and Michelle that's went right. to Art Center right. so yeah. I saw the intensity she went through I just could not believe what they and, put and, and then it was a competition through. too because you know what, what you did when you came to school with your homework is you put it up on a board and you had a critique and you just strive to be the best you wanted to win that there was no prize but you wanted to have the instructor say now this person did it you know Ken did this really good here you know and they were tough. I mean, if you didn't go, do good, sometimes they would take it off the wall and throw it out the window and say, now don't do that, you know, do this. So uh, it also was, was the door to uh, getting me at uh, Ford Motor Company. You know, the job was, as a designer. That was the next step. Yeah. So you yeah. moved from Art Center and thank you, Richard Kashalik and all right. of you right. who uh, lead that institution. And Richard, of course, being the CEO, the sure. president, sure. The, the, the staff and the, right. the, the professors there. George, I mean, George. all of these guys in the trans department were designers and I got an offer from GM and Ford and you know typical of a young you know 18 year old I think I was 21 by then uh, you know um, uh, 21 year old mind you know I thought Ford needed more help than GM so I was gonna go, <laughs> I was gonna go save Ford so meanwhile this inspiration keeps working right. away this mm -hmm. fire in your belly so to speak yeah. for 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 taking your art and actually mm -hmm. creating art that people would buy. Right. I mean, you had that right. staying with you throughout all this period. When I started doing the paintings to sell, and I never thought about selling my, my art. You know, uh, I mean, I, evidently Ford was paying me, they were buying my art and everything yeah. you did, whether you're at home yeah. or not, they own. Is yeah. it work? 
Uh, well, sometimes it is, but you know, you have to make a living. So I mean, sometimes I'd rather be out here working on my cars or, okay. or taking for a drive, okay. uh, and I have to do a painting. How, how did you get into whatever we want to call it? Okay. Uh, making, uh, Changing it from uh, Americana to, yeah. to automotive fine yeah, because art. Because there was no automotive fine art before. No, not, real, not, a, not a field where, you know, we didn't, there were no shows like at Pebble Beach. It was just, it was just referred to generally if a car was in the painting, it was Americana. Right, exactly. Uh, and in fact, most galleries weren't even interested in that, but uh, with anything with cars in it for some reason. I'm, I'm just starting to get it even in my own right. mind because even the car dealers, the car manufacturers, back in those days, a lot of times it wasn't photos. No, it, it was, most it, of it was drawings. It, it was all drawings. Because they exaggerated the cars. So yeah. when you started doing fine art, the first perception was it's just selling it's products. Exactly. So the same it couldn't way. be art. Right. It was commercial. Right. First I sold paintings to galleries and then uh, eventually I had one man shows, one person shows in galleries. Uh, and like I say, you know, each time I had a show, the people were interested in the cars. Uh, it was nostalgia, you know, you know, everybody either grew up around a car or had a car when they were a kid or their parents had a car or they were interested in racing, whatever. Everybody is surrounded by cars. You can't have, help but being interested. You maybe had your first date in a car. You had to rely on yourself to get all that done. You don't get a showing just by having people beating the door to yeah. your, beat, beating the path to your door it, to get you to do a showing. So. It's, it's sort of like AFAS, it's a team effort. AFAS, it's the Automotive okay. Fine, Fine Arts Society. Society. We're going right. back to 1986? Uh, actually, that was our first show in 86. 86. Uh, when did you actually form the, 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 that, small, that small group? Bob Larravee had come to one of my one-man shows at a gallery in Carmel. Uh, Bob Larravee, of course, of World of Wheels. Autorama, uh, Autorama uh, all that uh, championship uh, <laughs> auto shows, uh, very, very one of the famous great, guys, great very, personalities very of our guys. car. Obviously. I had a, a one-man art show in the in the Gallery Americana in town, and Bob came to that show. And he commissioned me to do a painting of not, that V16 Caddy and a and a 34 Packard Dietrich uh, body Packard. Uh, and I said, what kind of background do you want? And he said, well, there's a neat building near me that has a car show in it called Meadowbrook Hall. Why don't you put that in the background? And I brought that painting to that show and presented it to Bob at that show. And it was at that show in 1982 that six of us, six of the artists that were showing there, got together, sat down together, and thought of this idea of, of a, an organization or a group just to exchange information because there was nothing, there was no real field of automotive art. but but maybe if we just kept in touch, we could learn what's yeah. going on and that help each other. That was the very beginnings. That was the very beginning. Think of what's yeah. happened since gone a long that way since time. Then. The significant thing you guys are doing. I mean, well, this is becoming that. a major part of the car yeah, hobby right. now. I mean, I'm in awe of what you guys have accomplished. Well, You're all such great guys. You're all so patient. Yeah. And uh, the passion for your art is as great as the passion yeah. for the real Well, cars. thank you. And uh, it's a lot easier to take care of a painting. It is. Is. <laughs> <laughs> These, I have, you know, seven cars that, you know, collect the cars myself. They're all drivers, but there's always something going wrong with one of them, you know. When we come back, we'll talk more with this creative car guy and then go car hopping across the nation and around the world. So stay tuned for more on McGuire's Car Crazy. One super cool car guy imported from Sweden, Borje Forslund. Borje, I see you at so many shows. I love your patient. You are car crazy Swedish style. Yes, I'm <laughs> totally car crazy. And that word actually in Sweden means biltuki. And that's the same thing as we always do. Be, be, welcome to biltuki, everybody. Car crazy. <laughs> uh, quick, tell us about your cars, including the one that's right behind us. Well, I, I'm mainly a Mopar guy at heart. I got about four Mopars so far. and. I got a couple of GM, a Cadillac, and a Buick, and a Chevy. And a Chevy, and then this wonderful car behind us here. Yeah, Tell us about it. Happens to be a '59 Chrysler Windsor wagon, which is in town and country, which is a very rare production of Chrysler's wagons. Back in '59, they only made 751 of them, and they were always fan fascinated by lions. So they, they, they named the motor the Golden Lion. I wanted to have a wagon, so I figured I got to get an unusual wagon. So it's, it's a lot of Swedish. We always been nuts about cars. And I don't know why, but we, as little country as we are, we sure have a lot of American cars. Uh, there's this enormous car show just south of uh, Stockholm every year with uh, all American cars, almost entirely American cars. How many cars show up for that? It could be anywhere between ten 
to 15,000 cars. 10,000 American cars in this car show here in, in, in Sweden, just south of Stockholm. It's called the Power Meet, which is... Even an American term. Yes, <laughs> that's, they use, they're so influenced by America over there, it's amazing. Isn't you know? that amazing? And, and you've been featured in a lot of magazines? There have been some few. Yeah. Some yeah. few. So you're a pretty famous guy. Ah, I guess. <laughs> you're making me famous, Barry. <laughs> Did you ever find a cup so fine as mine? Hey, I'm Scott Webb. I'm Vice President of Merchandising for AutoZone, and I am car crazy. Now it's time to see how car crazy you are. In what model year did Chevrolet introduce the Chevelle? Was it 1958, 1964, 1966, or 1967? <laughs> How about it, all you muscle car junkies? Some of you got to know this, but we'll all find out just a little later in the show. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we'll discover what influenced Ken's artistic passion. It's all right here on Car Crazy. Welcome back to our exclusive interview with the renowned automotive artist, Ken Eberts. We're here in Temecula, California with my buddy, Ken Eberts, who is the president and co-founder of the Automotive Fine Arts Society. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about your wonderful history and the history of automotive fine arts as well. Ken is the one that does the poster for Hershey. I mean, this is the biggest car guy event in the United yeah, States, if so. not the 12, world. 12,000 swap spaces yeah, and 250,000 people. Yeah, 250,000 right. people. And Ken's the one that does the poster for this event year after year right. after year. Um, what an honor. To, it, to it, definitely, it definitely is. And it did start from the Fallbrook Show because that's a chapter of AACA. And I did the poster for that event for about eight years. So we contacted the people at AACA and they thought it was a good idea. And Oldsmobile sponsored it. And we did a series of four, eventually five posters on the 100th anniversary of the American automobile. Uh, and they went over very, very well. Uh, so many people go to Hershey and don't even realize that museum is there now. It's just right. like a mile away from the, from the Hershey grounds. Right, but it, so, you know, uh, it, it, it takes a lot of people helping you. Talk about the fun of, you have this idea and then you're, you, it just starts coming together. And some of them do it, some of them you have to work at. And it yeah. evolves, and yeah. all of a sudden you get another idea, and you say, no, yeah, this would be better. Help us understand right. all that. Well, I tell you, going back to my childhood when I was painting those little cars, you know, doing the little drawings yeah. design my own, and we go to the car dealerships, and, uh, you know, the three or four kids would put their hands <laughs> all over the cars, and the other ones get the car brochures. Well, from one of the dealerships, I got the 50th anniversary calendar for Ford Motor Company. It was done by Norman Rockwell. Oh and my so oh 50 my years later, I oh got to do oh the calendar goodness. for Ford Motor Company. And you Company, are the so. Norman Rockwell of the so automotive I mean, I don't world. I think maybe they you know, came down instead of me <laughs> going up, but, but it was real exciting to do that. And Is there one in particular, a painting that you've said to yourself, that at some point in time, I'm going to do this painting? Is there, is there, is there's there not one? a particular subject matter, but there's always the painting that I stick up on the wall at the AFAS tent in Pebble Beach that everybody comes over and pats you on their back and say, boy, that's fabulous, how did you do that? And it hasn't happened yet, but <laughs> that's what you strive for, is just nah, to do that. He is Ken Eberts, the president of the Automotive Fine Arts Society, and my dear friend, Ken, thank you for having thank us you. over. It's been my pleasure. Your place today. My it's pleasure. A fabulous story. When we come back, we'll find out what year Chevy debuted the Chevelle. So don't go away, it's right here on Car Crazy. So what did you decide? In what model year did Chevrolet introduce the Chevelle? Well, did you choose 1964? <laughs> oh yeah, and according to MuscleCarClub.com, it was Chevrolet's entry into the hot mid-sized muscle car proliferation. Initially, its 327 V8 engine didn't stand a chance against Pontiac's GTO 389 V8 engine. But by the 1970s, the Chevelle SS was equipped with the most powerful rated engine in muscle car history, the LS6 454. Still, one of the most popular cars of that era, the Chevelle made its mark both on the street and on the track. Well, if you knew this super sporty bit of car trivia, uh, you probably want to own a Chevelle. <laughs> but most definitely, you must be car crazy. And now, once again, Barry McGuire. This is a therapy session of our program where we read your car crazy confessions that you send to our website, carcrazycenter.com, and we provide counseling free of charge. <laughs> Here's one, uh, our next patient, Matt Price. I'm a 16-year-old living in Merritt Island, Florida. 
I wish I could tell you all sorts of cool stories about my car. There's only one problem. I have no car. It kills me not having a car to wrench around on in my free time. Instead, I spend my time earning money to buy me a car. My neighbor has a 1986 Monte Carlo that just sits next to some bushes. I got the courage one day and went to the man's house and asked him what he wanted for it. He said, $2,000. Of course, I didn't have the money at the time, so every day on my way to school, I see it sitting there, and every day I have a great new idea that spawns in my head. Neat paint, slicks and skinnies, cowl induction, blowers, roll cages, the works. I want to be remembered for my car, not sports or band. Every Saturday at 10 a.m., I wake up and watch the Speed Channel. I just love the automotive passion. My bedroom has pictures of Novas, Chevelles, Bel Airs, Mustangs, and the occasional Falcon all over them. I just had to tell somebody all this. Thanks for keeping your show. Uh, sincerely, Matt Price. Well, Matt, <laughs> thank you for your letter. And let me assure you that you're not alone. We have a huge audience of car guys your age that are still working towards their first car. And just like you, they are car crazy. In fact, I met car guys who are still in grade school. Not all, but most car guys become car guys as kids, myself included, and all of us dreamed about our first car, what it might be, and what we'd do with it when we got it, so welcome to the club. Only God knows what your future holds, but I can tell you, dream about having a cool car will push you to great limits and, and help you do great things with your life, because if you truly want a cool car, you're going to have to work real hard to get it. And that process will teach you some of the most important disciplines that will make your life a success. Car guys are special because you have to pay a price to be a car guy. And I'm not talking about money. It all starts with dreaming about your first car. And it really helps to have parents like you have that encourage you and let you hang pictures of all your favorite cars on the walls of your bedroom. Mr. and Mrs. Price, good going. Being a car guy is a fantastic alternative. Most of the other things are trying to capture Matt's attention and pull him down. This is a serious subject. Our kids are the future of this country, and it would be a lot better off if we join together, parents, and make our kids certifiably car crazy. Here's some really big news. Now you can upload videos of yourself and your car for the world to see on carcrazycentral.com. Send car crazy e-cards, download car crazy screensavers, catch up on car crazy news, watch car crazy television shows on demand, and enjoy our vast selection of original car crazy humor, videos, and cartoons guaranteed to make you laugh out loud. This is the meeting place for car guys worldwide, and it's all free right now on carcrazycentral.com, where the car hobby clicks. Car crazy.